there's a lot of talk about analog to digital converters greatly affecting the quality of your recordings. And before you go and drop a ton of money on a $2,000 system or more, you should really find out what your gear is capable of recording. And the best way to do that is a really, really simple test. Something that you may not have thought of doing that works really well and it shows just how good your interface can be. And I was surprised about the results when I first started doing this. And uh, maybe you will too. So first of all, you grab an MP3 player. I don't own one of those fancy smancy iPods or anything like that, so I have a GPS. Or if you're old school and still have one of these, it's a portable CD player for you youngins. And uh, you know, you just pop a disc in there like that. And this one has a line out. Ideally, you're using a line out on your MP3 player or CD player. This one doesn't have one, it just has headphone out, but it works just as well. Maybe not as good, but you know, it's better than nothing. It's really your only choice, so what, what can you do? Or in my case, I also have a home theater system that has a quarter inch stereo output uh, for the headphones. Now what you do is you run a cable from that device. So in this case, I got my little eighth inch uh, cable right here. And this goes to the end of an RCA cable. Now I do have a uh, Y split to quarter inch mono, but um, I can't find it right now. So I'm just using the RCA. And then I have RCA female to phono male quarter inch um, an adapter plug. So that goes in there like that. And then this plugs into the line input on my interface. And then what I normally do is I have a one kilohertz tone set up to right below zero decibel full scale. So it's it's usually where most CDs are nowadays. You know, they're they're all maxed out because of the loudness wars. So I set the kilo the uh, one kilohertz tone, play that with the MP3 player, set my input level um, on my digital interface. Now what I normally do is because the headphone output is set with a touchscreen control, I'll set the one kilohertz tone while it's playing. I'll change the output level so that it matches about negative 12 decibels on my recorder, you know, in, in Reaper or whatever your doll is. And then after that, I'll play my track, record it, and then I'll rip the CD, or if it's already an MP3, then I'll just drop the MP3 file into um, Reaper. And then I can play back both of those, and you know I'll time align them approximately, and then I'll flip them back and forth, and that's my quality. How good is my interface? I was really, really surprised. Even the sound car built into my computer sounds pretty decent. It's really noisy, but it, it's capable of capturing really good audio quality. So what that means is your converter isn't really the, the main issue with your sound quality, as long as it's capturing a good enough signal. Everything prior to that converter is really what determines the audio quality. And even then, you got to keep in mind, finalized CD tracks have been heavily mixed. You know, cuts have been done drastically with different EQ. They've been compressed. All kinds of different processing has gone on to that audio to make it in its final form. So this test really just shows you, hey, can I get a good signal going into my computer? Or can, I, or can I not? And maybe I should drop that two grand or one grand or whatever. Whatever, you know, your upgrade price will be will determine whether or not your interface, your capture card, whatever, whatever you want to call it, your interface, your converter, is it good enough to capture or do I need to upgrade? Now, you might be 
deciding to upgrade because it has more inputs. In that case, then it's really no discussion. But if you're talking about pure audio capture quality, your interface might be better than you think. This has been Adam for realhomerecording.com.